Handan is an industrial metropolitan area with a population of 8.5 million in northern China. Here, coal factories run day and night, and the pollution is so bad that locals can't even see the sun because of the smog covering the sky. It was just as smoky on the evening of 16 April 2007, when the bustling streets emptied of life and stars slipped faintly through the clouds. The detectives were on their way home when they received an unexpected call from a branch of the Agricultural Bank of China. Alarmed staff were unable to explain anything clearly over the phone, and police officers quickly drove up to the building. They were met by the head of the Handan branch himself and led to the vault, near which the employees were already crowded. No one could find the keys to the vault, so the policemen had to break down the heavy steel door, which took them a long time to do. Finally, when the detectives entered the vault, they found an ordinary money store. No sign of forced entry. The 60 centimeter thick walls were untouched. CCTV cameras and alarms were working as normal. There were no stunned or tied up guards either. A recent shift change took place and no incidents were seen. The problem was that a huge amount of money had disappeared from the vault and the only evidence the robbers had left was a bag full of lottery tickets. The security guard recalled that he had already seen this bag in the hands of Ren Zaifeng, the manager of the vault. Ren Zaifeng was considered a very lucky man. He was born into a poor family in northern Hebei province, where he was the fourth youngest child. In the 1980s, during the industrial boom, many families moved from the rural areas to the cities, where they worked in factories and construction sites. But Ren was quick to follow that path. His father, a Communist Party member, moved his family to the small town of Daiming shortly before Ren was born. Thanks to his father's connections, Ren went to a prestigious primary school and took table tennis lessons, and soon moved to bustling Handan, where he enrolled in an institute. A few years later, again with the help of his influential father, Ren joined the largest and most prestigious branch of the Agricultural Bank of China, a member of the big four banks in China. There, Ren was able to unleash his talent of having phenomenally fast fingers. At the time, not all Chinese banks were equipped with automatic currency counters, and the tellers had to train for the difficult task. There were different techniques of counting money. A good employee would count, double check, and pack 800 banknotes in just five minutes, while an extra class cashier would pass 2,000 banknotes through his fingers in the same time. Ren was one of these craftsmen. He repeatedly participated in competitions and won prizes. His superiors were proud of him and promoted him to a managerial position. Ren soon met a colleague of his and proposed to her. In 2004, the couple had twins. Back then, the country still had a one-child policy, and having twins was like winning the lottery. Ren's family lived in their own flat and were often visited by their parents and loved by their neighbors. The man's life was the embodiment of happiness. But things took a turn for the worse in 2006. 33-year-old Ren got transferred to a less prestigious job, dispensing cash from the vault. His salary was cut in half, and now the man needed money to feed his family. But colleagues said Ren had always been lucky, so why not try gambling? Once the communists came to power in 1949, they banned gambling. So Ren had few options, casinos in Macau, horse racing in Hong Kong, and the state lotteries. In 2006, the China Welfare Lottery and the China Sports Lottery generated almost $10.5 billion in revenue. The country was in desperate need of money as the 2008 Beijing Olympics approached, and the authorities wanted to use it to demonstrate China's global ambitions. The state television constantly broadcasted evening lotteries with large plastic balls with numbers on them. Ren couldn't resist and bought one ticket for two won, about 25 cents. He lost and bought another ticket, then another, and another. Each failure hurt him deeply. While Ren's life was going downhill, his country was getting richer and richer, becoming an industrial superpower. Ren's bank was flooded with money. Millionaires appeared every week, and he was left with no money and no future prospects with hungry children and aging parents. Luck had deserted him. Ren was only winning very small sums, then a bold and absurd plan emerged in the desperate man's mind. He calculated that if he took all the money from the vault, there was a good chance of hitting the jackpot. The money he borrowed could be returned from the winnings back to the bank, and he could live well off the rest of the profits. 
Ren knew exactly how his bank worked. The vault was unlocked by two managers. They simultaneously inserted their keys so that the heavy steel door would open. In October 2006, Ren managed to negotiate with both employees. It proved easy enough. All his colleagues got their jobs through connections and bribes, making the department lazy and negligent. In addition, in Chinese culture, it was customary to turn a blind eye to minor irregularities. Every morning, there were queues at the entrance because the doors rarely opened on time, and the guards were sleeping openly by the cash register because it was not their money. On October 13, 2006, three accomplices entered the vault and quietly bagged all the cash, 100,000 won or $12,500. They split the loot, Ren buying lottery tickets with his share. He sat down in front of the television and turned on the broadcast of the raffle. A cheerful announcer from Beijing announced the winning numbers with cheerful music in the background. This was Ren's last chance to preserve his well-being, his good name, and his family. He took another look at the numbers, checked them against the ticket, and jumped in amazement. He had won. It was not a jackpot, but a mid-level prize of 100,000 won. But even that amount was enough to make Ren believe his robbery had not been in vain, and his luck had returned to him. He bought more tickets, but lost, and lost, until his wallet was empty. The bank hadn't noticed the loss yet, and the accomplices decided to take another hundred grand. But one of the vault managers, Zhang, got scared, and said he'd reimburse the stolen money from his personal savings. Ren bought more tickets anyway, and made the jackpot again winning 210,000 won, or $25,500. Ren lied to Zhang and told him he had lost, and his troubled accomplice gave him 20,000 won from his own savings. The man returned some of the stolen money and even made a profit. Soon, Ren was lucky again. The bank promoted him to manager of the vault. He received words of comfort from his wife and friends, but deep down he was glad because he now had one of the two keys to the vault. By this time, he had become disillusioned with his accomplices, believing that they might turn him into the police. Ren was looking for a new accomplice with stronger nerves, and five months later, he found him. In March 2007, Ren's colleague was Ma Zhejing. Like Ren, he came from a village whose father had enough connections to promote his son. However, Ma was known for his hard work and honesty. He once recovered a lost RMB 200,000 from a client and was soon transferred to Hadan. Unable to withstand the temptations of the big city, Ma went on a spending spree. He regularly visited nightclubs and brothels, so when Ren offered his colleague to make some money, he gladly accepted. The accomplices disabled the cameras and stole 50,000 won, or $6,500, simply by hiding the cash in a bag. Ren and Ma sat in front of the TV watching the bouncing number balls. Not a single ticket won. The accomplices took the money again and lost again. A few days later, they went to the vault a third time, but could only win 200,000 won, about $2,500, which was a fraction of the cost. Almost every day, Ren took money, more and more. At the end of the month, there was a monthly inspection of the vault at the bank, but it was so superficial that the staff didn't even open the vaults. They just looked around the room and recorded that everything was in order. In the meantime, Ren had calculated the amount they had stolen. The debt was already 1 million won. There was no turning back now. Ren was sure that sooner or later, they would hit the jackpot and cover all the expenses. In addition, a sports lottery was coming up, where a record number of tickets were being sold. But bad news soon came to the bank. The auditors are coming to Hadan to inspect the vault and check the security system. Ren and Ma already owed more than 33 million won, more than $4 million, and they had two choices, either go to jail or run away with the loot. To succeed, they needed to get into the vault during the day and take the rest of the money, 18 million won. From there, buy tickets and win the jackpot. All the next day, Ren and Ma withdrew the money through another bank and purchased mountains of tickets. By the time the lottery started, they had completely emptied the vault and turned on the broadcast of the raffle. The balls popped up on the screen one by one, and within minutes, the accomplices found out that they had only won 98,000 won. They had just under 4 million won and two days to escape. On Monday, 16 April, 
Bank staff sounded the alarm when none of the vault managers turned up for work. After police broke open the steel door and found only a bag of tickets, the robbery was reported in the media. Ren and Ma stole 51 million won and became China's most successful burglars. Any information about them was rewarded with a handsome reward. Ma went to the slums of Beijing to stay with an old army buddy, where he rented a room next door. Ren, on the other hand, covered his tracks more carefully. He left in a van with a fake passport. Avoiding CCTV cameras, he made his way to a small town on the shores of the Yellow Sea. On April 16th, Ren tried to buy a new Honda, but to complete the deal, he had to drive with a bag full of cash to the bank, where he couldn't resist demonstrating his money counting skills to everyone. Almost immediately, he realized that buying the car was a mistake. The police started searching every building in town. Ren rented a small flat on the outskirts where he sat all day. From the news, he learned that his accomplice, Ma, had been arrested. It was all over. The police surrounded Ren's house and waited for him to come out in the morning. At the trial, the accomplices tried to save their lives and repented of what they had done. But the law was harsh. As civil servants who had embezzled money, they were sentenced to death. They were executed a few days before the start of the Olympics, but they are remembered as folk heroes who tried to catch their luck. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and click on the notification bell so you won't miss future video notifications.